Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Sager. I'm from Oregon State University, um, and I'm a county coordinator um, for the Master Gardener program and the Master Naturalist program. Um, my training and background is as an educator. So I'm always looking at the Master Gardener program through an educator's eyes, and sometimes I'm looking at them through like really big eyes, like, no, wait, stop. Um, so I'm always just trying to figure out ways that we can make our learning more engaging. Um, and this was something that I, this is an activity that I actually borrowed from another program, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, um, on how to just really work through controversial issues that come up in Master Gardener training. Sometimes I was seeing that we would allow space for discussion around them, but never really like letting our students grapple with them. So I'm going to lay a little bit of foundation in terms of why we're doing that in terms of educational theory. If that gets boring or I'm doing a bad job, jump back in in 10 minutes and I'll just show you the activity. So uh, we're going to start with the basics of just what is a controversial issue. Um, um, a controversial issue is a disagreement that's happening on a large scale. So it's not just like an argument between two people, but it's a public discourse that's affecting a lot of people. Uh, obviously, we all know what controversial issues are like intuitively. Anyone who's been to a family gathering with an uncle who talks about politics, like, you know, like you feel it. It's tough. And people get really um, on one side of issues when they don't necessarily need to. Um, things that make issues controversial um, are things like where we're coming at the issue with different value sets, right? That's, um, that's a big one. Um, but also sometimes there's just like not enough data that really like guides us in the right direction to an answer or disagreement about what that data is saying or whether it's useful. Um, sometimes issues are just too big or complex. Um, and oftentimes there's just no one right solution. And so we just get in these big public debates. Um, one of the things that we do, again, thinking back to your uncle at the family gatherings, we have this idea in our head that um, we're going to be able to explain our way out of controversial issues. And actually, like, I'm sorry to say this, but scientists are really bad about this. Um, we have this idea in our heads that, like, this other person disagrees with me. Uh, they obviously don't have the correct information. I shall bestow them said information, and then they will agree. Like, this is what we think happens. Um, and this was actually the model of education for a really long time. Um, the information deficit model is also called the banking model, right? Where we're filling people's heads with information. But we know, educators know that that just isn't really what works. Um, and that what happens when we try to use this model is uh, that we've got this sender of information and receiver of information. And what happens to that information is it gets filtered through many, many layers of bias. Um, and so the information being sent is heard in a very different way than they mean it to be received. Um, and, you know, the, the problem, the, the problem with that we call this particular kind of bias is confirmation bias, right? So this is a tendency um, to interpret information or to seek out information that is already, you know, what we believe. Um, and we do this all the time, um, just like this guy, right? I've heard the rhetoric from both sides. I'm going to do my own research. Literally the first thing that says what I think jackpot like we have this happens all the time um, And and part of the part of the danger with this kind of bias is that we think we're being unbiased, right? Like we we have all been this little man like I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find the Totally unbiased truth, but we just, it's very difficult to do that um, So bias, okay, what is it? Um, it's just a predisposition for or against right? Bias is actually really just a preference. Um, and the problem isn't that bias exists on its own. Like, I'm really here to, like, invite bias back into the room. Like, let's all cozy up and see what it looks like um, so that it's not unconscious. Like, having bias doesn't make us, um, like, it, that's not the problem. The problem is when we don't know what the bias is, when we don't recognize it or realize it, and then we can sort of step back from it. Um, and I see this in Master Gardeners a lot, especially in our plant clinic or our helpline or whatever you might call it, um, where we think that we're giving unbiased information, but we're really, they might find all the unbiased information and then just give the recommendation that they would have chosen themselves. Um, and, you know, it's, it's okay. Like, we just have to figure out what to do. Um, some of the ways I see this look, um, especially in things like plant clinic, are when we're using data selectively, right? We're picking and choosing what we want to share. Um, also using inflammatory language, creating false dichotomies, right? So 
really being like, it's either this or it's this, when most of the time these issues are kind of a both and, or a, it's a spectrum. Um, stereotyping and really um, being closed to influence from others, right? That's a really big way that bias plays out. Um, and a lot of ways that that sort of like, the, the caricature of that, right, is like, I'm the authority, like, I'm the expert here, I know the truth, like, I already know what you think. That's that sort of closed off bias that, that is, happens a lot in academia generally, none of us, but um, <laughs> just a thing. Um, so uh, master gardeners are adult learners, and some of the things we know about adult learners um, are fabulous, right? They're intrinsically motivated, means they're ready to learn, um, they have life experience, tons of knowledge, uh, they're problem oriented, they want to grapple um, with, with things in a really tangible way, and they have an established worldview. This is the area where bias really likes to hang out and sit on the couch, loaf around, um, hide behind curtains. Um, but that's the thing, like adults, adults come in with a, with a formulated perception of the world. Um, and so we're not, edu educators for adults are not building a foundation. We're not formative educators. We are transformative. We're trying to sort of um, change around the information that's there and connect it in new ways. Um, so one of the ways that you can do this is really simple. Um, we, this is a transformative learning uh, model. You engage your students with a challenging question, right? Something that's gonna really challenge the way they see things or um, ask them to look at things in a new way or to investigate it within themselves. Um, so then you are examining your own personal thoughts and feelings, usually the automatic ones, that's where your bias is gonna come. Then you think about what other people's perspective on this issue is, um, which will help you zoom out and sort of see the perspective in a new way, which will probably lead to more challenging questions blah, blah, blah. Um, the good news about uh, uncovering bias um, is that we get better with, at it with practice. So um, this activity that I'm gonna show you, um, I did with my master gardeners at the very end because I saw over the course of our training like all these issues that came up and we were talking about them but instead of really grappling with them, it was really just a debate and an exercise in really like digging your heels in more to what you already think. And I was like, we need to like break through this a little bit. Um, so this activity I um, borrowed and adapted from a colleague in Minnesota. Those of you who are here from Minnesota, um, she's a master naturalist educator there. Her name's Andrea Lurick Strauss. She's fabulous, very empowering educator. You should all meet her. Um, and she does this with her um, natural resource management classes. Um, and it's three questions and it is fabulous. So I broke my students into groups, three to five is about what we're working with, no bigger than that. Um, every group, every when I did it, every group picked their own topic, but it could be whatever topic you are teaching about. So what are some um, controversial topics that come up in your Master Gardener trainings? Pesticides are huge, 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 huge. GMOs, absolutely. Native plants, yes, absolutely. Um, so any of these things, if this is like your specialty, you could just incorporate this and give them a topic. Um, I had them just choose based on ones that we had talked about over the course of training. So you start five minutes um, with quiet writing, reflection. Um, what do I believe about this issue? So just what, what, on what side of the spectrum, the dynamic spectrum, um, do I fit into this conversation? Um, then you have them come back as a group and work together on the next two sections. The first one is write statements about this topic to which most people would agree, okay? Um, and the second part is write questions about this topic, the answers to which people disagree. Um, so I'll give you an example. GMOs, what do you know? Um, and this, what, these are actual examples that we had from class that were fabulous. Um, so I had them do their personal, what do I believe, um, with their group, write statements that you think most people will agree. And they said GMO practices can produce a lot of food. This can feed a lot of people, right? This was something that everyone in the group could agree upon. Um, and then questions, do GMO food products affect human health negatively? Do they affect whatever else negative? Like they had all these other questions, um, but that's how that sort of works. They really liked doing it in this order. They really liked starting with the common ground of okay, like let's actually find something that we can agree on that really worked for them. Um, this is part of a transformative learning 
model that I showed before, right? Engaging question, what do I think? Examine your thoughts and feelings. What do other people maybe think about this? Okay, zoom out, chill out, it's, not, it's fine. We can all talk about it. Um, the last thing I wanted to share is just um, that there's also this sort of uh, bias that I think that we get as faculty um, for data and research-based information, right? I mean, I know that that's gonna sound really silly, so it'll work, trust me, we'll go through it. Um, but there are lots of people who garden for lots of reasons, and um, I really wanted to think about the garden myths. And this was actually um, one of the topics that my class chose, which I was surprised because we didn't talk really about it during training, but they chose um, biodynamic farming practices. Are you guys familiar with that? Okay, so you know, lots of nodding, lots of like, oh yeah. Um, so the thing about biodynamic practices is it follows like the moon cycle and some other things that research doesn't have a lot of information to say like, yeah, you should do that, but people really like it. There is a growing population of people who really are into this, right? Controversial, quite controversial, not enough data to tell us what to do. Um, so I had a group choose this, um, which I thought was fabulous, and their information or their uh, statements to which people could agree is that the research is inconclusive, right? We don't know, okay? Um, and another thing they agreed upon was that some people use biodynamic farming as a part of their spiritual practice. There are a lot of native traditions that farm like this. Like we don't, we don't get to say like, this is whatever. So some people use that as part of their spiritual practice. They agreed on that. Um, what are some questions? Does this method actually do anything? That's a question that's out there, um, that the data is all over the place because some of it is science and some of it's like whatever. Um, and the next question that they um, thought people would disagree is that if you're talking with a client or a student who really cares about this um, and they follow these practices, does it matter to you as a master gardener or an educator? Does it matter? Do, do you need to like tell them, oh, there's, that doesn't work. There's no research about that. You should probably stop doing that, which I see a lot. Um, and I think that it's just important to remember that there's a lot of gardening happening out there that is like people garden for lots of reasons and they might want to know the science and they're they're excited to talk to master gardeners um, about it but that sometimes they get shot down because it's just not in our repertoire and I, that's also a bias that's my kick um these are some of the sources um that i pulled from and there's my info i did it